Chapter 420 Dai Luolai's Awakening Dai Luolai's greatest problem was that the spiritual power of his martial soul wasn't active when he cultivated. Even though they were experts in the Duke's mansion who discovered this problem, they didn't know what to do. After all, one's spiritual power was related to his soul. Souls were very magical. If Dai Luolai walked the wrong path, he might suffer from side effects, which would cause him harm. As a result, Dai Luolai continued to remain in his current state. No matter how hard he tried, he could only unleash half the strength of his martial soul. Naturally, he couldn't catch up to Dai Yuheng and Dai Huobin. Huo Yuao was using a very simple method to stimulate his martial soul, tapping into his feelings for Xu Yun. Using love as stimulation was very difficult, and it might lead to repercussions. Of course, the prerequisite was that this love could be fulfilled after Dai Luolai's martial soul was stimulated. As a result, Huo Yuao completely stimulated Dai Luolai's spiritual power to its extreme, enabling him to enter a state of craziness. Indeed, the spiritual components of his martial soul were completely stimulated, and his soul power rose by two ranks in just a short period of time. Dai Luolai didn't sense it himself, but he would immediately discover the significant changes to his body after he recovered, seeing that the blood tiger projection was about to reach him. Huo Yuao smiled and quickly shifted his footsteps. In an instant, he was already behind Dai Luolai. While Dai Luolai charged ferociously, the gap between him and Huo Yuao was simply too huge. Furthermore, he was only relying on his courage to sustain himself now. Huo Yuao smacked his palm against Dai Luolai's neck, and Dai Luolai shook slightly before he fell to the ground. At this point, the restraints on Xu Yun suddenly disappeared. She almost fell down, and she was unbalanced. After realizing she could move, she quickly rushed towards Dai Luolai. The way Dai Luolai had looked at her just now was already deeply etched in her mind. She couldn't forget the determination and fearlessness in his blood red eyes. For me, he. At this moment, Xu Yun was only feeling very sad. She quickly helped Dai Luolai up and cried out, Luolai, Luolai, wake up, you can't die. Wake up. As she cried out, tears were already flowing down uncontrollably. She hugged Dai Luolai, who was already covered in blood, tightly. Huo Yuan didn't stand too far away. He smiled as he looked at them. He knew that at least his brother had found a place inside this princess's heart. As for how they were going to develop in the future, it was going to be much simpler. Luolai, I've already done quite a bit for you. You'll have to count on yourself from now on. I'm going to kill you. Xu Yun suddenly lifted her head and glared at Huo Yuan furiously. You aren't an ordinary person. Tell me. Who are you? You must be a spy, a spy from the Sun Moon Empire. I'll get someone to kill you. Who are you? I rolled his eyes and said, Your Highness, let's not even talk about whether I'm a soul master first. Just from how you were screaming like that, who can you get to kill me if I kill you and him first? Shu Yun was stunned. Yes. Only the three of them were here. Why weren't there any guards patrolling this place even though they had made such a huge commotion? It was because she had told them not to disturb her in her cultivation. Right now, she was the only one who could fight Who are you? What could she do? Who are you? slowly walked towards her. While Shu Yun was a soul master, she was more like a little girl. She lacked fighting experience and looked very terrified now. As she hugged Dai Luolai tightly, she lost her voice and said, You, you, don't come over. Who are you? calmly smiled and said, He's not dead yet. Tell you what, let me kill him first. Then you can swear not to divulge my identity. I'll spare you then. What about that? Impossible. Xu Yun carried Dai Luolai as she suddenly stood up. There was a fierce look in her eyes, and she glared at Huo Yuao. I'm from the imperial family of the Star Luo Empire. I can only be a princess who dies in a fight, but not a princess who lives humiliatingly. If you want to kill him, then you better kill the both of us. Huo Yuao nodded in his heart. My younger brother has good taste. While this princess is a little overbearing and unreasonable, she has her principles. Furthermore, he discovered that Xu Yun seemed to be thinking of a solution of how to escape from his fingertips. He smiled and his eyes flashed with a trace of dim purplish gold. Xu Yun suddenly felt a weird spiritual undulation appearing. In the next moment, she became giddy before she fainted. Huo Yuao walked forward and supported her body. After that, he took Dai Luolai from her arms and placed her on the ground. Commander Xu has fainted. Who are you? I shouted. Then, carrying Dai Luolai, he transformed into an illusory projection before disappearing. When Dai Luolai woke up from his deep sleep, it was already the next morning. He opened his eyes wide, and the sky was already slightly bright. Dai Luolai only felt that his body was very warm and comfortable. His soul power surged strongly in his body, and an unprecedented sense of strength filled his entire body. More strangely, he was stunned to realize that his feeling of everything around him was not a result of his visual perception of them, but because there seemed to be another pair of eyes helping him to survey his surroundings. This was. As he opened his eyes, Dai Luolai sat up in his bed. The recruits from the first bunk also woke up at this moment and quickly donned their uniforms before washing up. After this, they went for breakfast. Everything that had happened last night played itself out in Dai Luolai's head. When he looked at his own body, he discovered that there weren't any injuries. Furthermore, he was dry and clean. His uniform was placed neatly to one side, as if he had never worn it before. Was everything last night a dream? Dai Luolai was in disbelief. Was I really dreaming? No, I couldn't be. How could it be so painful in my dream? Yes, it was him. He twisted his head to look at Tang Dong. Tang Dong had just changed into his uniform and was lazily stretching his waist. It seemed like he could sense Dai Luolai looking over and immediately turned his head to look back. After this, he revealed a kind smile. Dai Luolai was too curious and couldn't take it anymore. He quickly got up from his bed and put his uniform on before going to find Tang Dong. Dai Luolai was confused as he asked, Tang Dong, what happened to me last night? Why do I remember that I was being beaten up very tragically by you? Who are you unchortled? Is that so? If you think that's the case, then that's the case. However, do you really not remember what happened? Come on, let's go have breakfast. I'll tell you as we eat. As he spoke, he dragged Dai Luolai to go freshen up. Dai Luolai looked at him with an abnormal expression and was even more confused. However, it wasn't very appropriate for him to question Tang Dong with so many recruits around. After freshening up, the two of them went to have breakfast. In the canteen, they squatted down at one side to have their breakfast. What exactly happened last night? Dai Luolai couldn't help but ask. Who are you? I smiled and said, Let's not talk while we eat. Let's talk after we finish eating. Dai Luolai felt as if a ball of fire was slowly rising in his chest. If not for the fact that he couldn't beat Who are you? Out, he would have whacked him by now. It was a pity that this was only a thought in his head. He knew he didn't have any chance of winning against someone as perverted as Who are you? Out. He could only continue eating. After he quickly finished his breakfast, he turned his attention towards Who are you? Out again. Who are you? Out said, Come, let me show you something. As he spoke, Who are you? Out grabbed his shoulder. At the start, Dai Luolai wasn't very used to Who are you? Out doing this. However, he started to become more accustomed to it after a month. Anyway, he couldn't beat Who are you? Out in a fight. However, it was different this time. When Who are you? Out grabbed his shoulder, Dai Luolai suddenly sensed everything around him changing. The originally bright sky turned dark, and daytime turned to nighttime. Before he exclaimed, Who are you? Voice already sounded in his mind. Don't be shocked. Take a closer look. Don't you want to know what happened last night? Yes, it was nighttime. It was nighttime in the military camp, and they were on the military drill grounds. Very soon, Dai Luolai saw himself charging towards Huo Yuao like a mad tiger. However, he was flung back every single time. It wasn't an illusion. Everything that had happened last night was true. It wasn't an illusion. Furthermore, he watched how anxious he was as a bystander. However, he didn't know why Xu Yun was unable to move. When he saw the expression on Xu Yun's face, Dai Luolai subconsciously clenched his fist. Take a look at yourself. Huo Yuao's voice sounded again. Dai Luolai subconsciously turned his attention towards his own body. Suddenly,
Who are you? Al's voice sounded once again. Dilo Ali twisted his head to look at him as if he were looking at a monster. Who are you? Al smiled and asked. I'm asking you about your feelings after seeing what I've shown you. Dilo Ali subconsciously said, It would have been great if I was conscious when you hugged me. Who are you? Al was speechless as he smacked his forehead and said, I knew it. You emotional creature. I was asking you how you felt when you erupted last night. Didn't you realize that your martial soul has become different? Dilo Ali was very wary as he looked at Who are you? Al and said, Who are you exactly? What's with that illusion just now? Also, how did you know you know was a princess? Who are you? Al laughed. It seems you're not that dumb after all. I'm Tang Dong. I'm only Tang Dong. You just need to know that. You should have felt that you've gained something over the past month. You must work hard for your Yuna. Though, this is all that I can do for you. After he finished speaking, he turned around and walked towards their bunk. They still had some time to rest before their training started. Dai Luo Lai seemed very uncertain as he watched Huo Yuo leaving. Who is he exactly? No matter how slow he was right now, he could still sense that Huo Yuo wasn't an ordinary person. He had three rings, but he couldn't defeat an ordinary person. He was very doubtful about this. Even Xu Yun was also weaker than him, even though she had four rings. It seemed like they were both very far off from him. I should have thought that he was a soul master. I just don't know what type of soul master he is. However, what's he doing in the military? He's right. I can sense it. Dai Luo Lai calmed down and carefully recalled everything that had happened between him and Tang Dong over the last month. While he was beaten up every day, he was surprised to realize that his cultivation had slowly increased. It was something that had never happened before. Even when his father took some time to guide him, the improvements he made couldn't compare to what he had achieved over the last month. The weirder thing was the state he was in last night. He said that my martial soul has changed. He shut his eyes and silently sensed his martial soul. Very soon, he was surprised and immersed in this delightful surprise. Yes, his martial soul had indeed changed. In fact, it had grown stronger, which was beyond his imagination. He felt as if he had been reborn. Tang Dong, who are you? Did my father send you to help me? However, he clearly looks like he's around the same age as me. Why is he so strong? Who exactly is he? As he carried these doubts with him, Dai Luo Lai continued to sense his martial soul. The spirituality of his martial soul had finally been awakened. Everything had changed and become very beautiful. Today's training was on fighting together as a team. The recruits were separated into several rows, and some held up shields, while others grasped spears. The shields were placed in front, while the spears were held in preparation behind the shields. The recruits were required to do everything neatly and in synchronicity with every step they took. The equipment they were using for training had been specially enhanced. It was twice as heavy as their regular equipment, and was used to train the recruits' bodies and stability. Go! Zhuang Ting hollered at the recruits. The soldiers holding shields took a step forward in unison and raised their shields. They were adjusted to uniformity after today's training. Formations were very effective in a war, and an army which had gone through discipline training could rely on formations to fight against scattered soldiers with numbers multiple times their own. The recruits holding spears quickly stepped after the recruits holding shields and pointed their spears forwards as they aimed at the cracks between the shields. They moved as if they were about to lash out at any moment. Every time Zhuang Tian shouted loudly, the formation shifted one step forward as a whole. The formation followed his various commands, and different recruits moved at different speeds and with different footwork. Small Team One's movements were the neatest amongst the teams. Small Team One's leader, Tang Dong, was holding a spear, while Vice Team Leader Dai Luolai was holding a shield. They lead their entire small team, and they made sure that every action was done properly. After today's observation, Zhuang Tian was sure that he would make sure that these two people were promoted to actual small team leaders after their basic military training was over. Soldiers of such quality were few and far between. At this moment, a horseman came riding towards them from a distance. Dai Luolai was fully concentrated on completing his training when his brain suddenly froze as he saw this rider's figure. He subconsciously glanced at Huo Yuo behind him. This rider moved very quickly and arrived in the blink of an eye. Attention! Zhuang Tian hollered at everyone. The recruits holding shields withdrew their shields in front of their chests, while the soldiers holding spears planted their spears vertically on the ground as they stood up straight. Battalion commander, Mom. Zhuang Tian saluted the rider. The little princess, Xu Yun, was the one who had ridden here. Xu Yun could see Dai Luo Lai and Huo Yuo with one look because they were standing in front of their group. She had just woken up after she had fainted, and she realized that the sky was already bright when she woke up. While she was back in her own tent, if waves of pain hadn't been coming from her abdomen, she would have actually thought what happened yesterday was all just a dream. However, that dream was just too real. When she saw with her own eyes that Dai Luo Lai was standing in formation in perfect condition, she heaved a big sigh of relief. However, her eyebrows went vertical when she saw Huo Yuo. Of course, what happened last night couldn't possibly be a dream. Up until now, her abdomen was still throbbing agonizingly after being kicked twice last night. Xu Yun was instantly infuriated when she saw Tang Dong standing solemnly within the formation. This bastard really knows how to pretend. Shall I expose him? Xu Yun immediately extinguished this thought as soon as it appeared in her head. The reason for that was simple. Both Dai Luolai and Tang Dong were both standing in formation perfectly. She thought back to everything that had happened last night, and she really wasn't sure why Tang Dong had joined the military. If he was a spy, he would have killed Dai Luolai and her a long time ago. If that was the case, how could Dai Luolai continue his military training with his body in perfect condition? Xu Yun nodded in Zhuang Tian's direction as thoughts spun in her head. Large team leader Zhuang, how is the recruits training going? Zhuang Tian answered respectfully. The recruits' performance is all right. Small team one's performance is especially outstanding among them. They all have good potential. Zhuang Tian was never stingy with compliments about his outstanding subordinates. Oh. They've only been training for one month, and you're describing them as outstanding. Seems like they're quite impressive. After all, soldiers can improve best when they are in actual combat. Why don't we do this? Let my personal bodyguards accompany them for a practice battle. Shi Shuo, call my bodyguards. Shi Shuo hesitated for a moment and glanced at Zhuang Tian. Even though they didn't know where Shi Yun was from, they could faintly guess that this beautiful battalion commander came from an aristocratic family, and she was likely here to guild her family. Therefore, the few of them were only respectful on the surface this entire time, letting her personal bodyguards have a practice battle with recruits. Did the battalion commander actually think of that? Battalion commanders had their own personal bodyguards. One medium team was assigned as a battalion commander's bodyguard, and they usually comprised the most outstanding soldiers in the battalion. What? Were my words not clear enough? Xu Yun frowned deeply, and a formless pressure was unleashed from her body. Zhuang Tian glared at Shi Shuo, and Shi Shuo hurriedly answered respectfully before jogging away. Only then did Zhuang Tian turn towards Xu Yun with some hesitation in his expression. Battalion commander, your personal bodyguards are all the best of the best. Don't you think they're a little overqualified for combat practice with these recruits? Why don't we let these recruits spar amongst themselves? Xu Yun waved her hand and said, I want to show them how big the gap is between them and real soldiers. Don't worry, my bodyguards know their limits. In the military, even a difference of one rank meant the lower rank officer would have to listen to orders. Zhuang Tian was feeling a little dispirited inside, but he couldn't say anything against her wishes. It didn't take long before a squad of fifty soldiers jogged over neatly. These soldiers all seemed like they had wide waists and large arms, and everyone had a shield in their left hand, a long knife strapped to their waist, and was wearing leather armor. They were all private first class. And in addition to the fact that their robes were very neat, they seemed very intimidating. Reporting, Mom, your personal bodyguards are all in position. The medium team leader of Xu Yun's bodyguards was a youth that looked especially tough and muscular. His eyes sparkled, and there were clearly some other things besides respect in his eyes as he stared at Xu Yun. Xu Yun nodded and said, The recruits that Zhuang Tian is responsible for have performed exc
Wang Yue hollered at the top of his voice, and thirty guards swiftly jogged out and arranged themselves in one line. Zhuang Tian came up beside Huo Yuo and whispered, Tang Dong, I'm not sure why the battalion commander wants to have a practice fight like this, but you have to be careful and focus on defense. These fellows from her team of bodyguards are very rough and violent. Make sure you keep your formation in order. I'll ask the battalion commander to stop after you guys have held on for a little while. Yes, sir, Huo Yuo acknowledged, but he was a little amused. This little princess is so childish. She wants to target me, but too bad for her. I am small team one's being leader. But is there any meaning to this? Does she think that her personal bodyguards can force me to release my martial soul? Listen up, small team one. Take three steps forward together and separate into two rows. Prepare for battle. Huo Yuo shouted at his team. Small team one's recruits stared at those bodyguards who had backs like tigers and waists like bears, and their faces turned yellow with fear. But strangely, after Huo Yuo shouted at them, they all felt galvanized and invigorated, as if they had been injected with stimulants. They didn't seem afraid of the opponents in front of them anymore, and everyone took three broad steps forward with their chins raised. Those who were holding spears turned their spears around at the same time. They were having a practice fight after all, and using their spears handles prevented anyone from getting hurt. Shi Yun waved her hand and said, Begin. Wang Yue personally joined the formation, and had the recruits in front of him mockingly as he shouted, Shields, up. The guards raised the shields in their left hands, their right hands grasping long knives that were still sheathed. These long knives were different from those of normal foot soldiers. Foot soldiers' knives didn't have sheaths, but these bodyguards had long knives that came with sheaths, and their blades were made of steel. The sheaths made them more than twice as heavy as normal knives. And one needed a certain standard of strength to wield one. Charge. Wang Yue shouted at the top of his voice, and the 30 bodyguards charged furiously and in unison at the recruits. There were only 30 soldiers, but these bodyguards had been through much training and were cherry picked. Their fighting strength was far superior to normal soldiers, and they pushed forward with large strides at incredible speed while maintaining their formation at the same time. Shields, bow stance, spears, barricade stance. Who are you, Alholid? He didn't intend to use his abilities to affect his practice combat. Instead, he wanted to use the things he had learned today in his training. After his shout reignited the other recruits all to fight, he didn't intend to use any soul power or spiritual power. The recruits in the front row held their shields with both hands as they took a bow stance and placed their shields in front of them. They used a stance that was meant to barricade against a charge, and spears protruded through the gaps between two shields. The spears tips were planted diagonally onto the ground, as if they were repelling cavalry. The shields in a bow stance, in addition to the spears in a barricade stance, were normally used against cavalry, but who are you, still commanded them to use this tactic against the bodyguards who were rushing at them. Of course, the spear tips were supposed to be pointing forward in normal situations. Wang Yue was a little stunned, but immediately recovered and ordered, Slow down, draw your blades and slash them. The bodyguards instantly slowed down and they were less than 10 meters from the recruits. They raised their knives with their right hands and prepared to attack. Right at that moment, Huo Yuan suddenly shouted, charge at full speed. The recruits holding shields in a bow stance instantly charged forward at full speed, while those who were holding spears followed closely behind. Huo Yuan himself was holding a spear, and rushed right towards Wang Yue. Furthermore, he deliberately made sure that he was moving a little faster than his comrades, and he ran forward shoulder to shoulder with Dai Luolai. He whispered something in Dai Luolai's ear there. Dai Luolai didn't really feel much about this contest, but his eyes instantly became sharp when he heard Huo Yuan's words. Dai Luolai suddenly erupted with speed as he bolted forward and went straight for Wang Yue. Wang Yue swung his long blade disdainfully against his sudden burst of speed, and sliced down with his sheathed blade at Dai Luolai. A dull sound could be heard as Wang Yue felt a huge force hit him, and his knife was bounced away as he slashed at the shield. Furthermore, the shield crashed heavily into him, sending him hurtling through the air. Dai Luolai charged the fastest, so his clash with Wang Yue was the first to take place. Wang Yue was the one sent flying through the air, and this unexpected outcome caused the bodyguards to be a little dazed, but lifted the spirits of the recruits. A sudden change in morale was enough to affect the entire situation in a close quarters battle. Furthermore, the recruits were the ones charging forward, and they received a great morale boost, while the bodyguards were demoralized as they clashed violently. Bam, bam, bam. The sounds of combat rang out. The recruits' formation had two layers, while the bodyguards only had one. Initially, Wang Yue thought the bodyguards would have no problem dealing with the recruits, given their quality, even if they were one layer against two. However, under Huo Yuan's ingenious command, the recruits' dual layer formation's advantage was immediately unleashed. The recruits' strength was quite a far cry from the bodyguards. However, the recruits went at a disadvantage when they clashed because of their forward momentum. Both forces were presented as comparable to one another, and the spearmen in the second row lashed out at this moment. They jabbed the blunt end of their spears like poisonous snakes, sticking out their forked tongues. The bodyguards had formidable fighting strength, but they were still sent into disarray. The bodyguards who didn't clash directly with the recruits because of their single layer formation wrapped around from the side. However, there was someone anchoring down the recruits' flanks. Small team one team leader, Huo Yuao. Huo Yuao swung the blunt end of his spear as he smacked the bodyguard and sent him flying through the air. Huo Yuao looked like he was very focused on trying to control the spear in his hands, and there didn't seem to be anything especially powerful about him, but the bodyguards on the flanks just couldn't cross his line. Furthermore, the recruits weren't surrounded thanks to Huo Yuao's agile movement and footwork. Dai Luolai's fighting strength had been unleashed at this point. He held his shield and charged through the bodyguards' ranks like a tiger running through a flock of sheep. He sent bodyguards flying through the air with his shield, one after another. His teamwork with Huo Yuao was stellar. Huo Yuao barricaded the flanks, while he helped the other recruits deal with the bodyguards. They already had twice as many people, and in addition to the fact that he was a soul master who was hiding his abilities, the gap between the two forces was pulled even closer. More than half of the bodyguards had collapsed to the ground by the time Wang Yue got to his feet somewhere nearby, and the recruits' confidence was greatly boosted as they began to reinforce who are you out? Zhuang Tian's eyes were open wide, and his jaw hung slack as he watched the battle's transformations. Not in his wildest dreams did he think that these recruits could reach such a standard under Who are you out's command. Furthermore, Who are you out and Dai Luolai's individual fighting strength was presented as finely as they could be. Shi Shui was a medium team leader, and directly in charge of small team one. He felt a little dazed as he muttered, They. They won. What's happening? The contest was over when the last bodyguard was surrounded and knocked to the ground. Shi Yun stared coldly at Who are you out, and then at Dai Luolai beside him. She suddenly exclaimed, Small team one's leader and vice leader, step out and come in front of me. Dai Luolai was momentarily stunned, and only then did he realize that he had gone a little overboard. He had knocked down the largest number of people, and he didn't hold back his strength at all. Who are you out had barricaded the bodyguards and stopped them from flanking the recruits, but his performance was clearly a lot more normal compared to Dai Luolai's performance. Dai Luolai couldn't help but feel great regret in his heart, but how could he have held himself back? What Who are you out said to him was far too provoking. Who are you out's sentence was simple. He secretly told Dai Luolai that the bodyguards' team leader was his rival in love. Rivals in love would be especially filled with anger when they met each other. So Dai Luolai glanced at Huo Yuao, but Huo Yuao was already casually walking towards Xu Yun. Dai Luolai had no choice but to follow behind him and walk towards Xu Yun as well. They came up before Xu Yun and stood at attention. Dai Luolai lowered his head, but Huo Yuao saluted Xu Yun very normally. Xu Yun stared at them coldly and said, "The two of you are in cahoots, am I right?" Dai Luolai raised his head. He responded with an astonished look on his face. "What cahoots?" Xu Yun laughed coldly and said, "You still want to act? The two of you are clearly in cahoots,
else leave and said, hurry and follow me so we can explain ourselves. Otherwise, I'm finished. He pulled Huo Yuao to Xu Yan as he spoke. Huo Yuao had no choice but to follow. Dan Luo asked him as they jogged. Are you really sent by my father? Huo Yuao rolled his eyes and replied, of course not. I don't like your father at all. That was definitely the truth. Dan Luo looked at him in confusion and asked, you don't like my father? He's a national hero. Huo Yuao's mouth twitched, but he said nothing. Dai Luo was getting worried. What should we do? Yuna has misunderstood me. How am I supposed to explain myself? Huo Yuao turned around to look at him. Will you listen to me if I give you a suggestion? Dai Luo was momentarily stunned. Ah. Uh. Huo Yuao rolled his eyes and said, Let me tell you, there's no way you can explain yourself at a time like this. She will think that you're just trying to cover everything up no matter what you say. And she has already made up her mind that you pulled a trick by injuring yourself so you could gain her sympathy and get closer to her. Furthermore, you seemed as energetic as could be today. What resemblance was there to how you were almost beaten to death last night? Isn't that your fault? Dai Luo answered angrily. So, what should I do? Exactly? Huo Yuao said, Why are you asking me if you are unwilling to listen to me? You can think of a solution yourself. Dai Luo pulled a long face and muttered, All right, big brother, you should stop being angry with me for nothing. Quick, teach me. I'll listen to you. All right. Huo Yuao felt his heart quiver subtly when Dai Luo called him big brother. Dai Luo was his biological younger brother. After all, furthermore, Huo Yuao had no problems with him, like he did with Dai Yuheng and Dai Huobin. Huo Yuao's heart softened as he heaved a faint sigh and said, You are confused because you are too concerned. You should. Huo Yuao whispered something in Dai Luo's ear. Dai Luo eyes grew bigger by the second, and his eyes were completely wide and his jaw hung slack when Huo Yuao was finished. Are you sure this will work, boss? Don't blame me. I could die from this. Dai Luo's cheeks were starting to spasm. Huo Yuao said plainly, It's up to you whether you want to believe me. What I told you is what you should do to deal with that arrogant princess. Huo Yuao wasn't experienced with courting girls, and neither was he a flirt, but from his experience with Donga and Kyura's examples, and with the Tang sex various relationships twists and turns, along with the fact that he was older than Dai Luo by quite a bit, he had a deeper understanding about the romantic feelings between guys and girls. Xu Yan had already stopped in her tracks not far from them. The two of them were coming closer, and Dai Luo couldn't think of a good solution by himself. He gritted his teeth and said, All right, I'll trust you this once. If I succeed, then you'll be my older brother. Huo Yuao was the one who twitched his mouth this time. He thought to himself, I am your older brother in the first place. They quickly arrived in front of an indignant Xu Yan. Huo Yuao patted Dai Luo on the back, and Dai Luo immediately understood what he was trying to say. His expression changed swiftly. All his anxiety and worry from before disappeared, and he became very calm. Xu Yan didn't get down from her horse. She turned her horse around to face them and said, Don't you want to explain? Explain then. I want to hear what you have to say. This sentence was clearly meant for Dai Luolai. Dai Luolai said nothing. His expression was still plain and calm, and he grabbed his shirt's collar as he suddenly lifted his hands and took his shirt off. Ah. Uh. Xu Yang screamed as she hurriedly covered her eyes. Don't you want an explanation? You can see for yourself. Dai Luo muttered plainly. Xu Yang's astonishment was temporary. She peeked at him through the cracks of her fingers when she heard his words, and she drew a cold breath in the next moment. She lowered her hands subconsciously in the next moment. There were dozens of intertwining wounds all over Dai Luo body. Some had already formed scabs, while others were still oozing with fresh blood. His appearance seemed unnaturally frightening. Dai Luo slowly turned around and turned his back to Xu Yang. His back had the same number of wounds. If you think I am injuring myself to gain your sympathy, then so be it. I can stand here today because some of my martial soul's special abilities have been unleashed, and my martial soul has sublimated. That is all I have to say, and you can believe whatever you want to. He put his shirt back on after he finished his sentence. He then turned and walked back towards where the recruits were training. Xu Yang called out subconsciously, "Come back here, Dai Luo Her words weren't so effective this time. Dai Luolai seemed like he didn't hear her at all as he continued striding back toward the other recruits. Who are you out here to sigh? And he just stood there as he muttered under his breath. You've really hurt his heart. Xu Yan turned and glared at him. How have I hurt his heart? What about me? What about my heart? Who are you out said plainly? Your appearance was unexpected in the first place. You will know whether or not I am a spy if you calm down and think about it. You've changed your opinion, and now you think I have been sent by the White Tiger Duke. This proves that you understand in your heart that I cannot possibly be a spy. I can tell you very frankly that I have no connection at all to the White Tiger Duke, and I even hate him. As for Luolai, I only think that he has a martial soul with huge potential and talent, but he hasn't been able to unleash it, so I decided to help him a little. Let me ask you a question, princess. What? Xu Yan asked doubtfully, Who are you out continued? There's strength hidden within his martial soul, and this strength hasn't appeared after almost 20 years. Do you think it's that easy to draw out this strength? I've beaten him for more than a month. Why have I only beaten that strength out of him yesterday? Have you thought about that? All right, you can think about that yourself. However, I advise you not to try and reveal my identity. Otherwise, I will leave this place. I only have one aim in joining the army, and that is to defend my empire. You don't have to think too much about my identity, and you can just think of me as a soul master who cultivates independently. Who are you out turned and left after he finished his sentence, and he didn't give Xu Yan any chance to talk. Dawdling explanations would only make this princess even angrier. In the state she was in, she couldn't possibly think rationally or accept anything that Dai Luolai would have said to explain himself. Who are you out could only use this method of playing it cool and throw a hit back at her to achieve any effect at all. Furthermore, who are you words were all true. And Dai Luolai did trigger his martial soul's true strength because he wanted to protect Xu Yan. A contemplative look flowed from Xu Yan's eyes as she watched them leave. Everything that had happened last night played again and again in her mind. She couldn't forget Dai Luolai's eyes yesterday. Yes. How could he possibly fake an expression like that? Luolai, I'm sorry. I have blamed you wrongly. Xu Yan muttered under her breath. She wanted to chase after him, but couldn't get over her own pride, and she just watched Huo Yuao and Dai Luolai return to their ranks as they followed the recruits back for training. He has so many wounds on his body. How painful must that be? The two of them returned to the recruits. All those recruits, along with the other team leaders, stared at them with a completely different expression from before. The bodyguards had slung away. The two of them had just returned when they were immediately surrounded by the recruits and tossed into the air in the next moment. The two of them had led small team one's recruits to defeat the bodyguards. That battle made the blood in these fellows' hearts burn with passion. While Huo Yuao and Dai Luolai immediately became like heroes to them, just as the recruits were hollering excitedly and tossing them up and down, Huo Yuao's move was originally very high when he suddenly felt his heart tense up for no particular reason. In that moment, he felt as if the world had become black and white, and an indescribable fear instantly spread across his entire body. This of fear didn't come from a person or a living being. Instead, it became from an entire region of space. There seemed to be some force from the dark that was suppressing his heart and made him shudder with a fright that came from deep within his soul. This unprecedented situation turned his face ghastly pale in an instant. Something had happened, and something big was about to happen. After Wang Qiu sacrificed herself, Huo Yuao controlled the power of destiny, and this sudden fear gave him an extremely ominous feeling. His eyes seemed to be guided by a mysterious wave of the power of destiny, and he gazed into the distance as he was still being tossed up and down through the air. The sky suddenly seemed to brighten far into the horizon right at this moment. The flash that suddenly appeared was very intense, and even though it was extremely far away, it managed to catch the attention of all the recruits. Their frolicking stopped, and everyone turned and gazed in
That seems like, who are you I grabbed his shirt and dragged Dai in front of him. Everything has already happened, what can you do even if you head over right now? From this moment onwards, you're not allowed to leave my side, we'll wait until we have more accurate intel before we do anything. Right at this moment, shrill and he piercing whistling sounds could be heard ringing out hysterically from the entire 6th Reserve Legion. This was the whistle for an emergency assembly. Large numbers of reserve troops swiftly came out of their tents and assembled from every camp, and the officers got into their respective positions. The entire Reserve Legion was mobilized, and even though they were just the reserves, the quality they displayed was impressive. The order came down very quickly, all reserve troops were to prepare for battle, and that included recruits. Everyone was to pack up and get ready for battle at any moment. Xu Yan was a battalion commander, and her battalion consisted almost entirely of recruits. Who are you and the 300 recruits were her newest additions. Their battalion of recruits had twice as many people as normal battalions, and 900 soldiers in total. Xu Yan was standing in front of everyone, and her expression was exceptionally black. Who are you and Dai Luolai could guess what had happened, and she naturally could as well. Xu Yan hollered, Tang Dong, Dai Luolai, step out. Who are you and pulled Dai Luolai, and they took a few steps forward and saluted her. Xu Yan lowered her voice and said, From now on, the two of you are promoted as my bodyguards, but your ranks will remain private first class. Stand behind me. She couldn't care about military rules anymore at a time like this. The recruits hadn't even finished their basic military training, and they were officially not allowed to become bodyguards for a battalion commander. She was distraught with anxiety and confusion, however, and she needed a mainstay at a time like this. What she didn't know was that this order that she had just given was the wisest decision she had ever made in her entire life. Who are you out and Dai Luolai stepped behind Xu Yang. At a time like this, Who are you out wasn't worried about Dai Luolai making a move by himself. Xu Yang's presence was enough to calm him down a little. Xu Yang continued giving orders. Everyone, return to your bunks, pack and organize your things. Come back and assemble at the military drill ground afterward, and stay where you are to rest. After that, wait for further orders. Disperse. The soldiers returned to their respective destinations, but she kept Who are you out and Dai Luolai behind. The Sun Moon Empire. The Sun Moon Empire must have made their move. Xi Yang spoke as she fumed with rage between gritted teeth. Daddy Luolai didn't have to pretend. His expression was black, and he nodded forcefully. They've invaded us without declaring war. Furthermore, they've used soul tools which possess great power. I wonder how the front lines are doing. My father. Xi Yang interjected. The White Tiger Duke is a title duo, so he'll be fine. I wonder what class those soul tools are to give us such sensations. My only wish now is that the front lines haven't suffered excessively heavy losses. The army has already sent scouts to find out what's happening, and they should return quickly with definite intel. Who are Yuan's expression was solemn. Dai Luolai and Xi Yang weren't knowledgeable enough, and they didn't know enough to judge how forceful that explosion was. He was a gifted student from Shrek Academy Soul Tool Department, so how could he not be able to judge? The feeling he got from that explosion's force could only be achieved with one type of soul tool. That soul tool could only be a class 9 stationary soul cannon shell. They were almost 300 kilometers away from where the explosion had occurred, and they could still clearly see, hear, and feel the explosion's effects from such a distance away. Who are had only seen an explosion like this once before, and that was when he had triggered an explosion in that underground warehouse within Radiant Sea. The apocalyptic spectacle was deeply imprinted in his memory. This meant the explosion that had just occurred didn't come from just a single class 9 stationary soul cannon shell. It was that more than one had been used. The Sun Moon Empire had held themselves back for more than half a year. Were they about to launch a full scale invasion? The timing of their invasion was at least six months earlier than Hua Yuan had predicted. The Star Luo Empire became the Sun Moon Empire's first target after launching an invasion. Hua Yuan hid the faint sigh inside. He felt very helpless and exasperated. The Star Luo Empire was too far behind the Sun Moon Empire in terms of their research with soul tools. Otherwise, with the intense energy undulations that Class 9 stationary soul cannon shells gave off, those shells should have been intercepted at the border. However, it seems the Star Luo Empire were unsuccessful at intercepting those shells, and the Sun Moon Empire managed to detonate their stationary shells near the army stations near the Star Luo Empire's borders. The Star Luo Empire had probably sustained heavy losses this time. Dai Luo Lai wasn't the only one concerned about the White Tiger Duke. They didn't have much to pack. Their personal belongings were all stored inside storage type soul tools that they kept on their bodies all the time, while they were wearing all their military equipment, such as their uniforms, leather armor, number plates, and weapons. As for other items like their bedsheets and whatnot, they did not pack those burdens and things. The booms that resembled bell thunderclaps continued ringing out in the distance. Even though the light wasn't as bright as before, everyone could hear those dense explosions from several hundred kilometers away. It wasn't hard to imagine how intense the battle at the border was. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below with suggestions on what novels to read.